we ended up, you know, last year fifth overall. You know, there were really, depends how you look at it, there were four teams that were five and three, and there were six teams that were four and four. Of the six teams that were four and four, okay, we were the best because we beat four of those teams and then we did play Miami, but we ended up winning the bowl game and had a better record than Miami. So, you know, we were overall to me the fifth team, or we were tied for second. <laughs> Depends how you look at it, right? Yeah, all those numbers are Also, do you have any better sense of how the offensive line is progressing? You know, I'll know better. You know, pretty much who's been coaching this summer is uh, Phil Costa and Bruce Campbell. So I'll know a little bit better when we get back. But I, I know that they've worked very hard this summer. And they started coming out at the end of, of, of the spring. So, uh, you know, I think that's our big question. We're, we're, and I think more so can we run the ball than pass the ball. I think they'll do okay pass protecting. I think we're going to throw enough three and five step drop to be fine with a veteran quarterback, you know, who his hots are and where to go with the ball. But if we can run the ball, then I think we'll be okay. And if we can't run the ball, then I think we've got problems. Well, there's a lot of guys you're looking at at different positions or anything. Anybody that fits in the country, um, You know, and, and I've talked to them this year. AJ Francis is a guy that are starting to know But AJ, I think, would be a heck of an offensive line. I can't move him because I don't know where Deion Armstrong is. And I think AJ has made a tremendous preparation. I think he's 3'10 now, he was 3'40. The other guy that's made a heck of a preparation is Travis Sullivan. I think he's going to be a force myself. Yeah, so, obviously, you know, Zach Kerr is a young guy that will figure in, you know, Bellano, uh, Ian Davidson, they're, they're all inside guys, you know, so it's, uh, we've we got, we got enough players, it's just who's going to step up and get it done, you know, and be young. Was it Bellano that had the kind of the condition with his shoulder? Yeah, then he got operated, you know, he had two operations. Now, but he went through all the spring practice and he's doing fine. So they said it was like a degenerative thing, but the guy kind of fixed that. Well, he, what happened was he hurt his shoulder in high school, he got it operated on. And then he was wrestling right before he came here and hurt his other shoulder, you know, just horsing around. So he got that operated on. And then came here and went and practiced for like four plays and got it operated on again. So. Okay. But right now, we went all through spring, and, and I see him developing as a player. So. I wanted to ask something else just about Tara, just because the fact that, that he has been a, a, an interesting career, to say the least. Does that, does that assuage any doubts, you know, given how young the team is, that you have that as sort of a stable force? I'm hoping that it'll be a stabilizer for us, and I'm hoping the kids have confidence in him, that he's been successful in big games. You know, it was funny, I told him last night, he says, Coach, you know, he's got this internship with Stenny Hoyer. So I guess he answers phones and all he does is get complaints, you know. So I said, well, it's a lot like what I get when you don't play good. <laughs> Coach, I got, I got one kind of out of us here for uh, interested in the, the language of football. I was at uh, Colts training camp last year and they had a, I think it was a defensive scheme called Gandhi. Uh, can you talk about like how you organize the, the language of your team to change every year and what's the screw? Well, Don has got all kinds of stuff. Like one of the defenses, it's on, it's on terrible right? I don't know if you saw that. It's called chaos. Yeah. And Phil Costa comes out and goes, "That's aptly mean." <laughs> uh, you know, he has all these crazy names like that. You know, so I think they're. I think there are things that he does to motivate the players. But coaches are great for terminology, especially defensive coaches. Everything's an aggression. Yeah. You know. That's what that's what I found so interesting about Gandhi is it's the yeah. opposite of aggression. Probably a prevent defense. <laughs> well, Jim Grove mentioned they use like east and west, east 
to go to left and west to go to right, but that kind of stuff doesn't confuse you guys, does it? Let's see. I'm glad you told me that. See if you can find out. Going up against Spaziani over the years, what 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 are sort of the hallmarks of his defenses, and what sort of zone guy? blitz guy? He's a, sends a lot of pressure, he mixes things up very very well. Uh, you know, is he going to still call the defense? Uh, don't I, I don't know. I think they have a coordinator. In there. Um, so. I. Uh, you know, but there's, there's some similarities there between his career arc and yours, you know, just in terms of having to wait as long as he did. I mean, did you talk to him at all since he got hit that gig? Just kind you of don't talk about it. <laughs> no, it's like, other than I. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I think for us, most people, you know, we just about three to three. I mean, I would talk to him. I would talk to him. Now, this is if you have a podcast, I wouldn't even mind assigning you. Hey Ralph, I wanted to ask you about your backfield. You guys are just one of a bazillion teams in the conference that has a lot of good running backs to choose from. How do you, as a coach, is it as simple as whoever's got the hot hand, they earn, they earn it, or do you need to have some relief there? Sort of rotate guys? I don't think you ever can have enough running backs. And they take a beat. Um, plus, I also think it's a tremendous motivator. I know that if you don't do the job, then I'm going to put somebody else in. And so, and then I think you got to keep everybody fresh. You know, and, 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 you know, in the eight years I've been at Maryland, I've always played a lot of running backs. And, uh, so, uh, you know, I, I think it's a strength. I'm bringing eight running backs to camp. So that's probably top heavy with running backs, and I don't think that's a bad thing. Yes. So, uh, what do you think about overall just the talent that positions throughout the conference? Yeah, it's good, you know, and, and uh, you know, it, it, it helps, you know. Uh, like I think last year it was kind of like who had the hot hand, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, the guy I think that has gained you know, a lot of confidence and is really working hard and looking forward to the season is Morgan Green. And I'm anxious to see where he's at when he comes back. He got. Injured early last year and kind of lost his position to Meggett. I think he's on a mission. He had a very good spring practice, and so I'm anxious to see where he's at right now. So you have a pretty good guess as to a handful of true freshmen that have a decent chance of making the field for ours. Obviously. Well, that's really probably premature to say right now, but uh, you know, I know this. Uh, Caleb Porcel has can accelerate. Guy can run. From that TV game. You know, and, and really, I, I don't want, you know, I, 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 I know I have a couple of guys that I would like to see come on, but I don't ever think you should say that about freshmen just because uh, I don't want a freshman to ever think he failed. You know, if, if I had, if we were back where we had 105 scholarships, you know, I would be for having freshmen in eligible, you know, just to let them get, get through the transitionary stage. But, you're not to that stage, so I'm going to play anybody I think can help me win. I don't want to come out like a lot of coaches say, well, well, we're expecting so-and-so, and then he doesn't do it, and then he feels like he's failed. I don't want kids to feel that way. I want kids to say, well, I'm not ready yet, and you know, we'll work on it later. Do you think, though, that the guys that you've in, like, especially the sophomores, you just got – it seems like I was talking to, talking to Dwight, and he's faster, a different kind of athlete he's seen in the weight room. And, you know, maybe a lot of people are talking about Maryland a lot because you guys lost so many seniors, but it seems like there's a confidence in the young talent. Oh, wonderful. Oh, wow. That was That's a bad story. That Watch was, it, Heather. That, 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 was, that was quite a question. <laughs> I'm running around. <laughs> Oh, wow, somebody's turned a switch off. Yeah, the lights are on. The lights are on. There you go. Oh, those are out. Generator, that might be. That's the story that's going on.